Hello everyone, welcome back to Black Moon Coven. So in today's video, we're going to be studying bones in magic. So if this is not your thing, if seeing animals in this form kind of grosses you out, that's totally fine. There's plenty of other videos for you to watch on this channel. However, this video is more for witches who want to incorporate bones into their daily practices. So a little history before we begin. Bones have been used since the beginning, especially in more traditional paths like folk magic and traditional witchcraft. Their link with death and the spiritual realm is super, super powerful. That makes them really powerful, powerful tools, especially if you're into things like necromancy or spirit work. Really powerful connecting tools, um, especially with divination as well. So each animal and bone has its own association. So... Um, for example, the fox is very sly, is cunning, is wise, could be seen as a guide type of thing. The deer, on the other hand, could be seen as more of a transformation animal, an animal of magic, a guardian, a gatekeeper type of thing. Um, there's different associations for each animal, obviously. However, the bones have their own association, so they could be used interchangeably. Is that the right word? So I'll explain. A fox jawbone could be used for the same things as a deer jawbone, okay? So say you wanna make a pendulum, like I have here. Say you wanna make a pendulum. And jawbones, I really, really do recommend for pendulum work because you are communicating with spirit. So a jawbone is a really, really good for pendulum usage. So this is a fox jawbone. However, you could use a coyote, you could use a deer, you could use whatever and whomever you please. But yeah, so there's different associations per animal. However, the bone associations you can use interchangeably. So handling and collecting bones is the next section of this video. Always show the dead respect. Animal, human, insect, plant even, show them respect. They passed on, they passed that threshold. You always want to show them respect and ask permission. So if you happen to find some bones in the wild, ask permission, ask if they do want to come home with you, ask if they want to be a part of your practice. Usually you'll get a yes. However, if you do get a negative feeling of connotation, you should just probably not pursue that. Um, no human bones, okay? I don't practice with human bones. I'm sure there are witches out there who do nothing wrong with that. However, it takes a more experienced witch to practice with human bones because human spirit attaches itself to the bones. So they already come with a spirit attached to it and a spirit that is very one-sided, not like animal bones. Animal bones are of a neutral spirit. They're of a neutral energy. So human bones already have a set energy, a set spirit. They are completely set in their ways. They're permanent. Animal bones can be fluctuated. So human spirits are a lot trickier to work with than animal spirit. Never pick up bones with your hands. I can't stress this enough. It doesn't matter if it looks totally clean. Never pick it up with your hands, especially out in the wild. Always have a bag or gloves or even put gloves or bags on your hands and just pick it up that way. Don't touch it with your bare skin. You never know what was on it, who was on it, a bunch of different stuff. Plus the process of decomposition has a lot of bacteria. So just make sure that you are totally safe when you're doing that. So you have collected your bones and now you are ready to clean them. The first step you wanna do definitely is get it into a safe container. So Tupperware, a bowl that you don't plan on using anymore because now it's going to be not usable. This is strictly for bone purposes. This is my own method. Um, a lot of witches will do things differently. I like to do the slower method just because I receive a lot better results. So what you're going to want to do first is scrub the bone with degreaser. So that's your typical dish soap. You could get one with a degreaser in it. You want to grab a toothbrush from like the dollar store or whatever. Not your own, please. Go grab one from the dollar store. They're really, really cheap or just like a sponge or a brush, whatever. Have gloves ready and you're going to degrease the bones. Now, the reason why this is such an important step is that bones have attached flesh to them, depending on the state that you found them in. But usually bones have attached fat and flesh to them, making them 
really smelly when they rot, you know, so you don't want your bones to smell. They'll sometimes have an attached smell to them just because you didn't degrease them. So wash them thoroughly, degrease them. Then what you're gonna wanna do is put them in a bowl. Okay, I have a deer vertebrae in here that I recently degreased and now I'm whitening. So what I do is you grab some of this stuff. It's hydrogen peroxide and this is 3%. It doesn't have to be super strong. The reason why I use this over a really harsh bleach is because if the bone is really, really brittle or fragile, it will not crackle it any further. It is not as harsh as bleach, so it won't harm the bone in any way. Now, yes, this method is a lot slower. It could take a week up to two weeks, depending on how big the bone is, but it will eventually be white. You just have to keep doing it, keep changing out the water, and this stuff's super cheap. It's like 98 cents a whole bottle. So that's totally fine, but make sure that you are changing the hydrogen peroxide every time and refilling it again, just so we could clean itself out more and more, make sure you're flipping the bone around, so on and so forth. So like I said, this is a slower method. However, I like to do things like that just because it's not as rushed. That's just me. Um, but yeah, I have received great results doing this and that's just my own little method. So working with bones. Okay, this is um, something that I have newly kind of explored in my path. Um, I have always kind of been attracted to bones and skulls and things like that. But as far as working with them in my craft, this is something not new, but yes, I am newly exploring this. So working with bones, always respect the dead. Don't have to tell you twice, but I did. Respect the dead. Doesn't matter if they're already in your home and you have the bones, please respect them. Don't drop them, keep them safe, put them in a nice pouch. Whatever you plan to do with them, respect them don't desecrate them any further you know um you are holding a piece of this animal's soul a piece of their spirit so just be very very careful with them be very 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 respectful so respect that every bone is a representation of that animal and all animals are connected to the divine so all animals have a spirit all animals have a soul that's just what i believe so each bone that I possess has a part of that animal's soul, a part of that animal's spirit, and it's very important to respect that. So bones are powerful and they hold their own energy. So it doesn't matter which bone you have or which animal part you are using, it's very powerful because you are adding in that animal spirit. So like I said before, no human bones. Not only is it disrespectful, but the energy is so unpredictable because of the attached spirit. Plus, I'm not sure of a legal way to get human bones, maybe through like uh, medical evidence um, or like medical examples, I don't know. But um, yeah, human bones, especially real ones, have an attached spirit already, so they make them really, really tricky to work with. Now, if you are an experienced witch, that's totally up to you and what you want to do. So, bones are good for spells. Divination, charm bags, rituals, necromancy, spirit work, the list goes on and on, trust me. So now I'm going to just show off a couple of bones that I have in my collection and kind of how I plan to work with these bones. So we've all seen this deer vertebrae. If you follow me on Pagan and Witches Amino, you've seen it up close, but I just found a perfectly good deer vertebrae outside. And I'm going to be making that into an altar piece. So. And right here, you guys probably also seen this, but this is my fox jawbone pendulum that I use quite frequently now and I've gotten quite great results. I painted these Slavic runes on them for spirit and knowledge. So this is a handcrafted pendulum made out of a fox jawbone for spiritual communication. This is interesting. This is a spirit charm. I've also featured this on Pagan and Witches Amino. But here on the bottom are raccoon teeth, a mandrake root, some of my hair, 
<laughs> into a spirit charm. Now, these spirit charms help you link yourself into the spiritual world. So when I wear this, when I meditate, I want to contact spirit. So it's kind of like a key sort of thing. I guess you could think of it as a key to the other threshold, to the other side. So very powerful, very cool little raccoon teeth. Raccoons are also associated with the spirit world really heavily. So here I have some teeth. I don't know if you can see them, but I have some teeth that I've extracted from this box jawbone just because they were loose already and I didn't want them to fall out. So I extracted them and I'm planning to use them in little charm bags or other little things. These next two items I got from another fellow witch, Jen, the taxidermy witch. Thank you so much. So this is a chicken's foot, taxidermy chicken foot. And she makes these on her Etsy site. Amazing, amazing looking ones. And I got this awesome leathery looking red one. It's so great. Now in traditional magic, these can be used for cleansing. It can be used for spreading smoke around. It can be used just for cleansing yourself, cleansing your space. I keep it on my altar because it's such a good cleanser there. I love it. And I also have some snake skin from Jennifer, which I have a whole bunch. And if you followed me on Witches and Pagans Amina, you know that the day of the snake and saw the paganism just passed. So I had this on my altar and I'm really thankful to have that. But snakes are great for like protection or any truth spells or anything like that. So I have a lot of snake skin that I could use. And the feeling of it is just so weird. It's almost like nice, it's kind of weird. So anyways, that is my bones in witchcraft video. Hope everyone liked it. Hope everyone got a little bit uh, inspired to use bones in their practice. If not, that's totally okay. If you're here just to um, gawk at different bones, that, that's totally cool too. So follow me on all my social media. Follow me on Witches and Pagans Aminos. Definitely join the coven and subscribe if you have not done so already. And until next time, I will see you guys.